hello friends welcome to the current affairs class for geography and disaster management we have already shared a document that has a list of important topics that has a higher probability of coming in exam that includes any pcc targets and inca reports that emphasizes the special areas and special sectors that should be our focus for preparation so to begin with in this class we shall be discussing some previous years papers and we will be checking how the pattern of the paper has been changing over a period of time and accordingly we will be discussing certain current affairs topics which were running in news in 2019 or 2020 so let us begin with the 2019 paper if you look at the 2019 paper just one question that is how do ocean currents and water masses differ in their impact on marine and coastal environment this was related to core geography other than this topic if we look at other topics such as water stress or localization of agro based food processing industries these are not part of core geography papers that we understand from either climatology or physiography or indian geography part so all other things are basically dynamic part of this this paper for example all that is related either to coral life systems or to mountain ecosystem or to regional resource based manufacturing sectors or depletion of mangroves all these were running in news for some or the other reason so this paper although gs1 paper looks like more or less a static subject but it is it has not remained a static subject because of the presence of geography which is a high, highly dynamic part in geography we have seen especially in 2019 paper just one question was coming from the static part now let us move on to the 2018 paper 2018 paper also has core geography part from mantle plume and its role in plate tectonics rest everything for example india's keen interest in arctic region or the dead zone ecosystems or the blue revolution or the significance of industrial corridor all of them were running in news and additionally we have already discussed that water has become a very important topic for upsc consecutively from 2016 onwards some or the other form has brought this topic in the question paper now let us move on to 2017 paper 2017 paper asked juno's mission to understand the origin and evolution of earth so again it became a dynamic part if we look at or look for the static portion it was related to either cryosphere or variation in oceanic salinity or the characteristics of monsoon type of climate rest everything again was related either to dynamic part for example international year of pulses by united nation or the coal mining part or with respect to petroleum refineries all these are resources part which keep on changing so if we try to look at the topic wise these years of question paper we are getting regular question on resources be it from india or from the international region for example in 2018 paper we have seen that it is the arctic region in 2017 paper it is either coal mine within india or petroleum refineries within india or topic wise other another very important topic that we have seen recurringly in paper is related to either water stress or another topic that can come from current affairs can be international year which is declared by united nation general assembly and this year for 2020 we have international year of plant health so that will be one of our topic for discussion other than this a topic related to water we have already discussed while discussing the question paper of one of the tests and with respect to resources whatever is running in news that we shall be discussing now let us move on to 2016 paper again the static portion was related either to air mass or the himalayas region being prone to landslides so the causes and suggest suitable measures for mitigation these were coming from the core geography part again with respect to resources we had question coming from south china sea 
or with respect to water we had question on vulnerability of flood conditions or again with respect to water we had question on micro watershed development projects so we have already seen topic wise categorization if we do there are definite and certain question from core part of geography this core geography can be either physical geography or geomorphology or it can be climatology or it can be oceanography that is if we talk about oceanography it can be from with respect to coral reefs or it can be with respect to salinity or it can be even with respect to difference or changes in temperature and pressure condition of any particular ocean if we talk about climatology we have seen questions with respect to indian monsoon characteristics of indian monsoon or the characteristic of monsoon type of climate or with respect to air mass and its macro climatic changes or the frontal cyclones basically with respect to physical geography we have seen questions on mantle plume and all so the core part of geography will definitely appear in one or at max two questions but another important portion that we can expect in exam shall be coming from resource additionally we can also expect a resource such as water or land so now let us move on to the first topic of our discussion which was very much in news in 2020 and that was related to corona virus basically in this topic we shall be analyzing the origin of zoonotic diseases from tropics why majority of the zoonotic diseases are originating from tropics and certain data with respect to these issues and how to deal with particular situation so in this respect let us discuss this question that states establish the relation between occurrence of zoonotic disease in tropical areas and examine the causes and measures to prevent them so basically we need to establish a relationship between occurrence of zoonotic disease rather its origin and tropical areas so talking about certain data or if we are able to recognize or remember this map this is the zone of tropical countries and in this region we can see origin of so many diseases that includes nipa virus that includes kayasanur forest disease that also includes ebola and now from wuhan we have the corona virus so what is the relation that we have so many zoonotic diseases that are coming from these regions first of all why these regions only and secondly even if these regions are the reason then what is the solution to it so to begin with this answer we need to first define what are zoonotic diseases zoonotic diseases are those diseases that have ability to transfer themselves from animals to human beings so they have a potential of getting transmitted from animals to humans now according to united nations environmental program or unep the neglected zoonotic diseases are basically a subset of neglected tropical diseases so who is already conducting so many programs to tackle this ntds that is neglected tropical diseases but we have not laid enough emphasis on a subset of it which is the neglected zoonotic disease or zoonotic diseases additionally what we also need to keep in mind that earlier roughly 60% of the emerging infectious disease or eids were coming from animals but now this number has increased now emerging infectious diseases 75% is coming from animals so this is definitely a cause of worry now we also need to prove this fact that zoonotic diseases are originating in tropical areas such as ebola as well as hiv both of them originated in democratic republic of congo nipa virus that originated in malaysia kayasanur forest disease that originated in india and covid-19 that had originated in wuhan china but we also need to emphasize this fact that definitely the cause lies within tropic but the effect is felt everywhere as we have seen very recently in the case of covid-19 so what are the causes for occurrence of these zoonotic diseases or origin of these zoonotic diseases especially in the tropical areas 
the causes include firstly deforestation because of this deforestation the animals or the biodiversity which was residing initially inside the forest area have come out of the forest and have started to interact more with the human habitable population so because of this interaction the bacteria or the virus is able to get transmitted from animals to humans secondly global warming has also allowed pushing of these diseases to new territories because of global warming more and more area have become conducive for the survival of bacteria or virus uh, virus or fungi because overall there is a rise in temperature as well as rise in humidity conditions thereby creating conducive conditions for the pathogens to survive additionally interestingly in these areas the basically tropical countries the health infrastructure is extremely poor the doctor to patient ratio in these tropical countries is nowhere even close to the prescribed ratio of world health organization so they add up once the epidemic starts to spread the, this condition that is poor healthcare infrastructure add up to the spread of such pathogens amongst the human population another cause can be the presence of apt hot and humid conditions for the survival of pathogens as well as high biodiversity because of higher insulation in the tropical areas the presence of biodiversity is much higher in this region and because of presence of higher biodiversity pathogens have greater option of transmitting themselves from one host to another so these can be some of the causes for the origin or easy spread of zoonotic disease in the tropical areas now let us move towards the what are the measures that can be taken to combat such a problem now measures can easily be thought of as correction of these causes for example if we have a poor health infrastructure we need to improve our health care infrastructure as well as increase our public health expenditure additionally reduced conversion of forest land for agriculture or habitable purpose or efficient utilization of whatever land do we have can be one of the major factors whereby we can stop deforestation and thereby reduce the interaction between human beings and animals additionally we also need to increase the awareness of masses because because domestic animals are the easy carriers of these pathogens so we need to break the chain by creating awareness and thereby improving the health of domestic animals additionally re regular research for vaccination should be conducted to combat with the present situation or any expected upcoming situation so basically that was all with respect to zoonotic diseases and tropics now, now let us move on to the next topic that is related to pharmaceutical sector India's pharmaceutical sector is third largest in world by volume and India net contributes 20% or 1/5th by value if we talk in terms of economic value we contribute almost 20% to the global generic market the pharmaceutical sector in India is earner of more than 10 billion dollars of net foreign exchange annually so it has the potential of it sector what it sector did in 2000s to india this can be done by pharmaceutical sector as of now but there are certain important problems that is the dependence on import of raw material this is extremely high and the dependence of a major raw material called api or active pharmaceutical ingredient which is also commonly known as bulk drugs this is coming this reliance is much or more on china now as of now when we had curbed imports from china during corona virus we understood the problem with respect to pharmaceutical sector and especially the import of apis so now is the right time for india to develop self reliance with respect to apis especially because apis or active pharmaceutical ingredients become important component for the manufacturing of the final drug 
now before we move on to the next topic we first will go through location of important pharmaceutical centers in india as we can see in this map they are mostly located in the western coast or in the southern india and an important pharma hub that is baddi baroti wala area of solan district which is already a pharma hub now why this pattern or why this concentration of pharmaceutical sector in the western coast of india and especially south india this should also be analyzed the presence of seaport for export provides easy marketable conditions in these regions because we have the presence of natural ports in the western coast of india the drugs that are being manufactured in these areas can get easily transported to the other centers Additionally natural gas which is one of the primary input to pharmaceutical sector is abundantly available in the western coast and because of trading mentality of south india or trading mentality of regions such as maharashtra there is availability of huge capital which is a basic necessity for the presence of pharmaceutical sector so because of trade like conditions there is availability of huge capital in the western coast of india or in entire south india additionally because of good education skills there is the presence of skilled labor in south india which adds to a contributing factor for the presence of pharmaceutical sector in these regions and lastly favorable government policies presence of land availability of uninterrupted power supply all these add up for the occurrence or easy settlement of pharmaceutical sector in these regions so this was all related to why pharmaceutical sector is more concentrated towards the western coast or the southern part of india now let us move on to certain challenges of pharmaceutical industry the most important challenge related to pharmaceutical industry is the research we do not spend enough on research in this sector india is one of the largest producer or one of the leading producer of generic medicine which does not require clinical trials or clinical testing we are already producing a drug which has been prepared by some other country so as of now what india needs to focus is research spending and that too it should be in line with the effect of the disease as of now research spending is not in line with the effect of the disease for example neglected tropical disease that affect almost 1 billion people annually just attract 0.35% of the pharma industry in terms of research so if we have to reduce the effect of neglected tropical disease basically we need to increase our research spending on this sector which is a very minimal amount of 0.35% additionally what firms usually do is that they will sell drugs for those patients who do not require it we call these patients as functional patients they are there are a huge category of these patients who basically can get treated even without the use of any medicine but because of the mental psychology that the medicine will easily be able to heal them they have a tendency of taking or popping medicine very easily so firms market their produce or market their medicines by clearly or cleverly selling their drugs to those patients who basically do not require it and they have a dual advantage of earning through development of duplicative drugs basically that do not add anything to our pharmaceutical toolbox so we are not conducting innovation in this sector which can be a hindrance or which was a hindrance especially in the case of covid-19 so one of the primary challenges of pharmaceutical industry is the lack of research and because we are unable to control such kind of cheating behavior of firms but additionally we should also keep in mind that india's pharmaceutical industry is much cheaper and the industries are not earning sufficient as compared to their western counterparts so what has government done to tackle these challenges 
government has created bulk drug park scheme in which three bulk drug parks shall be created whose major aim shall be to reduce dependency on the import of active pharmaceutical ingredients or the bulk drugs one such bulk drug park shall be created in himachal pradesh as we discussed because it is already a pharmaceutical hub under this scheme we the government shall be providing common infrastructure to three selected parks and thereby the infrastructure burden of setting up these industries shall be taken up by the government in terms of fdi government has already relaxed restrictions wherein under green field projects 100% fdi under automatic re- automatic route is allowed whereas in case of brown field projects it is 74% under automatic route so that was all related to what government has already done what can or what should be more done or what shall be our way forward if we get a question with respect to pharmaceutical industry can be these the first point can be covid-19 crisis has taught india a lesson that india has a very huge potential of developing itself as a pharmaceutical leading industry already we have a very highly competitive industry and thereby we are providing very cheap drugs although these drugs are usually generic medicines so as of now we need to or the government needs to target financial incentives especially in the areas of diagnostic kits because we do not have a definitive standard for diagnostic kits as well as other medical devices so these are some of the other areas wherein government needs to spread its wings also a health impact fund can be created this health of impact fund shall reduce the cost of patented drugs we already know that we are paying royalty for patented drugs that makes these medicines very costly if it is a newly researched medicine so there can be a proposal to create a health impact fund that shall reduce the cost of patented drugs this is very much required for communicable diseases as we have seen for neglected tropical diseases that affects almost 1 billion people annually across the world has a research spending of just 0.35% so with respect to india we need to increase research spending on these sectors and if we have a health impact fund that will allow these newly researched drugs to be kept cheap we need to focus more on mostly communicable diseases that affect a greater number of population additionally it shall also not disturb compulsory licensing and thereby will not allow the pharmaceutical industry who has innovated this drug basically what do we do in compulsory licensing is the government will ensure that any producer can use or sell a patented product without the consent of the patentee so this is if a certain country allows compulsory licensing it becomes very annoying for those industries who conduct the research so under health impact fund the proposal is that whatever royalty that should be paid to the researching pharmaceutical industry that royalty should be taken up by government under health health impact fund and thereby make this drug relatively much cheaper so by these measures health impact fund can ultimately bring down the price of effective drug and that is how we conclude this sector or this topic that was related to pharmaceutical industry now let us move on to the next topic which is related to international year of plant health as we have seen international year of pulses has appeared in one of the upsc papers it is usually declared by united nation general assembly or unga for 2020 unga has declared international year of plant health and thereby we are discussing this topic so let us begin with this topic in this topic we will not be discussing any particular question but we will simply run our imagination and thought process in four important dimensions wherein these questions can appear that is we can have a question related to international year of plant health how will it impact the human development index 
or how will it impact or how will it improve the condition of vulnerable section of society especially the small and marginal farmers or women participating in agriculture another aspect with respect to international area of plant health that can be asked or that can appear in paper shall be related to hidden hunger or how international year of plant health or how focusing on plant health can help us improve the conditions of hidden hunger or malnourishment or another dimension lastly can be how it will help in protecting environment as well as boosting economic development so let us go through these topics one by one basically if we are focusing on plant health we are focusing on less use of fertilizer as well as less use of pesticides we are in this direction we are basically focusing on bio fertilizer or bio pesticides so we are improving the plant health and in turn we are also improving the soil health if we are improving or focusing on the plant health that means automatically its impact or the bio accumulation that usually occurs wherein certain elements or heavy metals are able to enter the human food chain we can avoid them and thereby protect environment additionally if we make use of less of fertilizer and pesticides we are automatically boosting economic development or we are improving the condition of small and marginal farmers or women so we just need to recall the points which are related to plant health and put these points in with respect to whatever part is being asked if the question is related to human development index there are three major indicators to human development index that includes standard of living health and education so if you are able to make use of bio fertilizer or bio pesticide or move towards organic farming we are automatically improving the health and as well as the standard of living because the excessive input that we will be putting through the use of fertilizer or pesticides or increased usage of water we will be able to tackle all these problems and thereby with reduced input cost we shall be able to improve the standard of living as well as health because in case of organic products the availability of nutrients or the diversity of nutrients found in the plants automatically increases and if we are able to affect or improve these two factors we will be automatically improving or affecting the education as an indicator that means a healthy child with a good standard of living shall have a better quality of education now if we focus on plant health and thereby reduce the use of fertilizer and pesticide or move towards bio fertilizer or bio pesticide we will be automatically improving the biodiversity if we are able to improve the biodiversity we shall be improving soil health health of the environment and thereby protect environment we shall be also making use of diversity or biodiversity to tackle the hidden hunger or malnourishment additionally it shall also improve the income of small marginal farmers or women or improve their health now with respect to solutions that we can use for improving plant health it can be promoting the use of bio fertilizer or through risk analysis we need to first of all anticipate risk for example we had two important pest attacks this year one was related to locust or the and the other one was related to fall army worm so if we were able to anticipate the risk much better as well as risk surveillance and management we could have been able to reduce the effect of these pests on indian agriculture additionally what we should also undertake in our agenda is risk awareness as well as communication and communication till the last end that is farmer should be communicated about the upcoming attacks of the pest so this can be a one of our way forward that is protecting plants from pest and diseases is far more cost effective than dealing with a full blown plant health emergencies such as the one that we faced because of locust attack or the attack from fall army worm so that was all related to international year of plant health now let us move on to the next topic that is related to mediterranean sea acting as one of the climate change hotspots 
so with this topic we have one question that says researchers have shown evidence of mediterranean sea acting as a climate change hotspot we need to examine the reasons why is it restricted to mediterranean region so before we enter into examining the reasons we first need to prove the point that research is correct that mediterranean sea is acting as a climate change hotspot so some of the proofs include data such as 50% of the cities that are going to get affected globally because of rise in temperature lies in and around mediterranean sea region additionally this region is expected to witness a rise in temperature by almost 2.2 degrees by 2040 which is a very significant rise one another effect that has already started to show in the eastern mediterranean region is reduce precipitation in the reduced precipitation in the region this entire region will be witnessing 40% less precipitation during winters as according to the research so let us examine the mediterranean sea region it is surrounded by so many mountains that includes young fold mountains such as alps and other mountainous regions such as atlas mountain ranges or the anatolia plateau of turkey or even the apennines mountain of italy so because of the presence of these mountains there are certain conditions which are being built up in the mediterranean sea region which is going to make this entire region warmer than the surrounding regions so if we get a question like this that we need to analyze why mediterranean sea is warming faster than the surrounding region we first need to start up with the data and following that we also need to draw a rough map of mediterranean sea and surrounding it with important mountain ranges why these conducive conditions are being created now let us move on to the reasons why this entire region is witnessing or trying to behave or expected to behave like a climate change hotspot the first reason that we shall be discussing here is jet stream jet stream plays a very important role in determining the macro climatic conditions of a region and the strength of jet streams shall increase over a period of time as and when there will be a rise in the global temperature so because of this rise in global temperature these jet streams will get strengthened because of the strengthening of jet stream there will be occurrence of intense high pressure system in this zone if there is intense high pressure system divergence of wind will occur because of this divergence this air will move from high pressure system to low pressure system thereby creating a dry area or reduced moisture in this entire region another reason that sh we shall be focusing upon is reduction in temperature difference between land and sea because the temperature of water is rising faster than land since the temperature of water is rising faster than land then the transition or the difference in temperature between land and sea is going to get reduced if there is reduction in temperature difference between land and sea automatically it will affect the land breeze and the sea breeze system and thereby whatever difference in temperature or the cooling of land used to occur because of the presence of sea that shall not occur why is it very much specific to mediterranean region is because of presence of mountains which will act as a trapping of this heat system in this entire zone additionally this sea is much more enclosed as compared to any other sea or majority of the other seas because of which the effect of land on water will be evidently visible so because of all these reasons this entire region is going to witness a much more reduced rainfall and a period of drier zone during the winter season so that was all with respect to mediterranean sea acting as a climate change hotspot now let us move on to the next topic which is with respect to blue revolution although blue revolution has appeared in the paper but it has a very high chances of reappearing so we are here to discuss this topic so why is it running in news because budget 2019 has focused on blue 
न्यू ब्लू रिवोल्यूशन और ब्लू रिवोल्यूशन टू डॉट ओ दिस ब्लू रिवोल्यूशन टू डॉट ओ शैल फोकस ऑन इकोनॉमिक प्रॉस्पेरिटी ऑफ फिश फार्मर्स एज ऑफ नाउ इंडिया इज द सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ फिश फॉलोइंग चाइना एंड इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द फिशरी सेक्टर कंट्रीब्यूशन टू जी डी पी इट इज रफली अराउंड वन परसेंट बट इन टर्म्स ऑफ पोटेंशियल इफ वी टॉक अबाउट इट इंडिया हैज अ वेरी लार्ज एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन अ कोस्टल अ कोस्टलाइन ऑफ अप्रॉक्सीमेटली Additionally, inland fishery is also not utilized to its pot- full potential. As of now, we are just working on the forty percent of the potential of inland fisheries. But there are certain challenges that we need to overcome to utilize the complete potential and make it uh, the largest producer of fisheries in the world. First important challenge that we need to tackle is improving the fisheries mapping technology. That is the use of technology to map. where we are expected to get more number of fishes and in which season another challenge that india faces is the presence of ghost nets because of the presence of ghost nets that is those nets that were used for fishing but if the nets are spoiled or torn the fishermen have a habit of leaving these nets inside water because of these nets the aquatic life gets affected there are so many marine species that die when they get tied inside these ghost nets and ultimately fisheries sector is unable to get the input or the natural feed thereby declining the population of fishes another important challenge that is more or less specific to india is the iuu fishing restrictions recently us had taken india to world trade organization or world wto stating that india is conducting illegal unregulated as well as unreported fishing although india has won this case stating that we are not conducting any form of iuu fishing but excessive fishing in any form must be restricted so that we do not face any sanctions from wto lastly we also have this ongoing challenge of the changing climate and the rise in global sea level that is going to affect the presence of phytoplankton and thereby the number of fishes so in these terms the government initiatives include pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana that aims to make india as a hot spot for fish as well as aquatic products basically in this yojana or in this scheme we are trying to improve our infrastructure management as well as traceability so that we are able to get more and more number of catches in every trip we are also making use of national monsoon mission to direct the fishermen where can they get easy catch or more number of fishes additionally to improve the inland fisheries government has emphasized construction of fish ponds under manrega so if we have to think about the way forward with respect to blue revolution we need to develop the logistic support in a robust manner because especially with respect to fisheries sector it is very important that we have a quick supply chains because of the quick perishability of the product so this improvement in supply chain management through better logistic support will give us greater price for the same produce additionally we also need to increase the utilization capacity of or utilization of cold storage as of now in india just 1% of the cold storage is used to store fishes so we need to improve our cold storage facilities to be used for fisheries sector as well so these can be some of the way forwards that we can use in case of blue revolution now let us move on to the next topic that is with respect to mediterranean sea natural gas this entire region has remained in news because of the discovery of natural gas in the eastern mediterranean region this is the cyprus island which is basically divided into two parts the northern part being held by turkey and the southern part being an independent country cyprus with its capital as nicosia this is the region where we have found the presence of natural gas and these are all exploration well 
so with this topic we can get a question or we can expect a question like examine the ongoing tensions in the mediterranean sea region post exploration of natural gas so in this question we need to describe the location of mediterranean sea region along with the neighboring countries and we need to quickly mention the natural gas fields which are running in use now a very close island which is part of greece is the crete island which was the disputed region which was the region in dispute because turkey ships were found in crete region so that is part of the ongoing tension there has been occurrence of an alliance of turkey libya and russia versus nato allies and greece on the other side that also include countries such as cyprus france and other major powers or other major allies of nato this tension has increased because of the presence of french naval ships in the eastern mediterranean region basically to back the countries that is greece as well as cyprus and turkish exploration ships were found near crete island of greece already there are ongoing tensions between turkey and greece because of the conversion of hagia sophia into a mosque hagia sophia had so many reserves with respect to christianity that when it was converted from a museum to a mosque the religious sentiments of greeks were hurt when turkish government converted hagia sophia into a mosque so already with ongoing tensions this east med association or this east med natural gas exploration has increased the existing tension additionally why is turkey annoyed is because of the creation of east med gas forum which has excluded turkey it is a major player in the eastern mediterranean region the east med gas forum consists of countries that includes cyprus egypt greece israel italy jordan as well as palestine so this entire eastern mediterranean countries all of them have been included excepting turkey that has annoyed turkey so this is the ongoing issue as of now the last statements that were coming from the organization of the governments were statements such as nato had accepted that turkish ships have been moved back and greece is also ready to converse or communicate with the turkish government here eu can or european union can play as a major player in negotiations or we can also make use of impartial bodies such as uncls that could negotiate the peace deal by equitable distribution of resources or distribution of economically exclusive zones so finally that was all with respect to east med gas forum now if you have any topic that you want me to discuss or if you have any doubt with respect to topics that were discussed you can let me know on my number my name is tuti anand and my phone number is 9717136138 please do let me know if you want any topic to be discussed or if you have any issue or confusion with respect to any topics discussed i wish you guys all the best for your exam